Colossians 3.15 Let the peace of Christ roll in your heart. Since as members of one body, you are called to peace and be thankful. We have a choice to make. We can hold on to our anxieties, fears, and stresses. Or we can let Christ's peace roll in our hearts. My natural tendency is to allow troubles to cause me to fret. But over the years, in the light of scriptures like this, I have learned and I'm still learning to let the peace of Christ rule in my heart, to deliberately turn my cares over to Him and consciously allow Him to replace them with His own peace. Try it. It works. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 I now made the Lord of peace Himself give you peace at all times and in every way. Peace in the Bible is about being united, being one, being complete, being whole with God and others. It is about being tranquil, having a tranquil relationship with God and with others. And in the Bible, peace exists even when there is conflict and problems going on around. Irene and Shalom have the state of tranquility despite problems. As we dig deeper into scripture and the necessary requirement for such peace, for permanent peace is God himself. Jesus From Ephesians 2 verse 14, we hear for Jesus himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. For us to have peace with God and with others, Jesus is essential. It is Jesus who we need to be focused on. It is Jesus who brings us peace. <clears throat> and he does this by removing the requirement that someone is fully meet all the requirements of the law as the final say as to whether someone can be part of the Christian community. From verse 15 we hear, By abolishing in his place the law with its commandments and regulations. I just need to clarify something. It doesn't mean whether you can do whatever you want. It doesn't mean you don't have to worry about obeying the law. But it does mean that the requirement of whether you are able to get into heaven is based on whether you trust Jesus and His death on the cross as the way for you to be in heaven. Only Jesus can provide the peace with God. Because as verse 18 says, For through Him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. And so what does this mean for us as individual Christians and as a community? For I start, I would like you to think about those things in your life where there is not peace. When there is a turmoil, maybe you are unsatisfied with something. Where you have put things off. And when you are seeking peace for those areas in your life, you are unsettled. Are you trying to do more? Or are you starting with Jesus? Are you spending more time with Jesus? Our starting point is with Jesus. The second point, we are a part of a Christian community. We are a community in this congregation. God has called us together as a community. Jesus constantly wants us to live together. And so what are the walls that exist between you and others in this congregation? Who are the people you don't really get along with? And ask yourself why. Who are the people you put down, talk, or think negatively about when they are not in your company? When we put others down, we are allowing Satan to use us to build a wall between each other. We are allowing Satan to use the differences between us to, dis to, to divide us. Rather than allow God to use our differences to build, us, to build us up. We are trying to make being a Christian something it is not meant to be. Restricted by what we like and what and who we are comfortable with, rather than what God may be creating us to be.
That is my closing prayer for you. That you will find the Lord's peace filling your heart and mind. At all times and every way, let His peace roll in your heart and you will find life's troubles much easier to manage under the influence of the wonderful peace of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.